Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. So today what I'm going to be actually showing you is something a little bit different. Um, I was going to update the um, teleporter tutorial but it seems to be already um, updated to pretty much a stable version so I thought I would just put something quickly together that um, might be obvious not be that obvious to some people about um, how to use the blocks and stuff like that for matching um, basically player settings and stuff like that so we need to find some pigs or some pigs over here uh, basically what I've done is I have gotten the same velocity as the player as well as the uh, same head rotation so that will basically happen to pigs I have it configured that way on the pig uh, spectrum so basically every time the pig updates it's going to try to match basically what I'm doing uh, there is a little bit of bug for the land animals uh, for some reason I think it might be a minecraft bug on that regard but uh, velocity only really works if you're jumping which is really weird but uh, we can go to these pigs over here and then we'll kind of just, um, we can kind of see how they all work. So if we come down, uh, we can kind of go up and then you can see that they jump. So that's pretty cool because you can actually match MBT variables and stuff. As you can see, if we like jump a little bit, then they kind of get moved. But um, that's only if we're like sprinting and jumping. We can put that one in the water if we want to. And they go down too. So we, if we go down this far, they'll go down that far too. It's pretty cool. And if they go up, then they then they go up too. So if we want to make them actually die, we can go over this way. And then we can just like drop them. <laughs> it's actually pretty fun to play around with. Uh, so other uses for this is you could do it with MBT data. So maybe you wanted to match the variable for um, an animal or a player for another entity. And then you might want to do something based on that variable. Uh, that could be done. Uh, maybe you wanted to give a player a separate variable and then have something different happen when the entity comes in contact it wouldn't exactly be killing the pig unless you wanted it to but um it would allow you to do some extra fun stuff with it so that's basically it uh let's go into m crater now and i'll kind of show you the procedure it's just one procedure it's pretty simple so we'll cover that just now all right so the one procedure is just a simple global procedure uh it's set to on loaded entity tick update so basically every time the loaded entity will tick, it's going to run this procedure. The next thing that we're doing is we're running it on server side so it's not going to um, also be running on the client side. That might help with the performance a little bit. So that's why I'm running it only on the server side. That means it's just going to be running for the machine running the computer rather than the um, all the players uh, that are nearby. So it should help with the performance a little bit. Uh, the next thing that we're testing for is we're testing it for the entity that we want to be running the script for. So you could basically use um, a number of things. You could use uh, exact uh, display names or you could use uh, the type of entity, but uh, you will need a target selector for this uh, of some sort in order to target what you want to actually load. So if you wanted to run something based on the entity's name, then you could do the display name or something like that. And um, you could do it for potions if there's a certain thing with potions there's tons of different options that you can actually do it with um, basically just the condition to target an entity this is basically what you're going to be uh, running it for uh, inside that box what we're doing is we're basically getting the location of the entity so basically the position where the script is running we're just using the X Y and Z we're going to be using that a couple times in the procedure so it's easier just to basically apply that to a local variable so we can just copy that same thing over and over again uh, then what we're doing is we're getting the nearest entity so we're testing for the player in this case so uh, you might want to add support for server player as well you would have to create a new line like this and update server player if it's a server player so basically this whole line right here and everything in it you would have to duplicate if it's a server player so um, best way to actually do that is to do an else statement so it's not going to run after 
the or if else if statement because if it's um separate blocks like this then it's going to run directly after but if it's in the same if statement then it's going to basically run uh only if the first one fails so you would probably want to copy all this stuff over and make an if else if statement and then just update the two variables right here for the uh, server player or the player to a server player down here. Uh, then what we're doing is we're just using those local variables to basically target the entity's location. We're testing in a 32 block cube. So basically anything in a 32 block radius of the player or pardon me, the pig that this will basically run. So any entities in there will basically get this um, script, whatever we decide to put in here will basically be applied to the, the pig. Um, the next thing that we're doing is we're basically just going ahead and applying a entity ver local variable and we're just getting the nearest entity. Now we will be using this in a few different things for this procedure. Uh, there's different variables like the velocity for the entity that we want to get as well as the the rotation. So uh, we need to get those from the actual entity. So rather than use this block a number of times, what we can do is we can just pass it over to a local entity variable and then use that block so it uses less blocks in the actual procedure. That will help with performance for the actual um, procedure itself for blocky as well as also clean up your script a little bit as well. So. Then we're just passing over the velocity. Um, I tried multiplying it by two. I think it helped a little bit, but it didn't really fix the issue where you had to like basically jump and sprint and stuff like that. So it might even be a higher number than two. I don't know, but generally um, if it's like 0 0.5 or something, then it would be basically multiplying that. So I'm not sure what number you might want to make this number like 10 or something and see if that actually helps but basically that would um, might help with the thing if you multiply the the actual velocity by two it should um, if it's a solid number it should basically give the the same uh, velocity direction so for example if it's a negative number if you multiply it by two it should be a negative like multiply it in the negative direction rather than upwards I think I tested it with my calculator. It seems to work that way. So hopefully it's not different on the computer. Sometimes it is. I'm not sure why computer math is a little bit different than real math sometimes, but uh, the Y velocity seems to work fine, which is really weird. But I mean, it only really happens when we jump. So uh, sprinting and jumping seems to help. But as soon as the player touches the ground, for some reason, velocity doesn't work. I don't know why. Couldn't figure it out. Uh, but the yawn pitch does work. So basically we just got the yawn pitch direction of the head and then we're just basically applying the over uh, ride motion vector and applying the, ve the velocity variables to these ones. So we can basically pass it over to the uh, target source entity, which is again, the pig, not the, uh, the player variable one. The player variable is just basically the player. And then we are also setting the rotation. So say you want to use a script and update it for a maybe a local or MBT variable, you could do that. You might want to pass over something like a string or um, logic variable or something like that from a entity. So you would basically go ahead and um, you would need to get the local variable from the entity. So what you would do is you would go ahead and grab the get block as well. And then for the get block, what you would do is you would basically remove that and place your um, local variable for that one. And then these two names needs to be the same. So if you wanted to do test, then test would be also test for this one. And then you would just remove that variable and then basically that's all you would need to do. It would basically just um, pass the variable from the player over to the entity, and that's as simple, it is, simple as it is. Um, many other things like um, maybe you wanted to test if the um, player was on fire or something like that, you could do that as well. Uh, you could basically go ahead and set the entity on fire. I think there's a block for that somewhere in here. 
Um, set entity and cobweb. Extinguish. I'm actually seeing a fire one. Move potion effect, display name, gravity oxygen, sneaking. Uh, that's maybe it's just a large block. I don't know. But um, yeah, you can basically pass over a bunch of stuff from certain things. All these variables should work fine. But uh, I'm not seeing the fire one for some reason. I see extinguish, but maybe it's something else I was thinking about. But uh, yeah, you can basically do a lot of stuff with it. You could use all these different things if you wanted to test if a certain block or something like that, or like if they ha even if they have an inventory of something, you could pass over the inventory to the entity. So that would work as well. So yeah, just kind of play around with it, figure out what you want to do with it. Uh, there's obviously multiple applications for it. Uh, you might want to um, make something so you could pass over a certain variable and it would be uh, maybe follow the entity or something like that. But this will work for both modded and a um, vanilla, obviously, because we're using a pig for this. But um, yeah, it, it'll basically support pretty much anything as long as you can actually target it. Uh, for things that are in tags, you could also target through tags. So rather than like if it's from another mod, then you might want to you like ask them to add a tag and then you could target the tag itself rather than the uh, pig or the actual type of the entity. And what this would do is it would basically target that particular entity from the mod or wherever their namespace for the tag is and it would allow you to run the exact same script for your mod which could be very useful in most regard you could also have other mods adapt to your mod which is another option you could just use a specific variable and then basically apply entities to that list and allow mods to apply that variable or that tag to those entities and then they could add support for your mod as well so hopefully you guys found this video interesting uh it's more technical than anything but um it's still something useful uh that could be used in a number of applications you might even want to um, match a certain player you might want to have it so entities um, pass over to other entities so it doesn't necessarily have to be the player it could be another pig or something like that it could pass over other variables like that so um yeah just thought i would show it it's not that obvious that you could do that but it's very possible to do so i thought i would cover it so hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and i will see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out